now 70,000 people following the Blue Economy weekly innovations around the globe in different languages. But when I can stand here, I really would like to take time and pay tribute to the people who have guided me, who have critiqued me, who have dialogued me, who have told me that I was totally wrong and off the mark and a nuisance. And I can be a nuisance, I agree. But I've been inspired by people, and maybe you remember some of those, and you recognize some of those, but as you can see, quite a few are those who are really from that world and community that the God of Rome represents. Not least, of course, Aureli Petei. Not the least, indeed, Ashok and Anders. But I also would like to just all of you point out my own wife, because I think she's not here, second in the row on the top. That's my true life. And the reason why we're so engaged in this is because we have children. I have five children. And if we don't engage in order to preserve what we have and do much better than we could ever imagine for our children, for whom in the hell would we do it? And so therefore, permit me to share these few personal pictures of my kids, including my daughter, Chia. And that's one of those famous pictures that inspired me to say, the world is just not green, the world is blue. And, and I was actually very intrigued by seeing that the blue sponsor is higher than the green sponsor. <laughs> and we have this incredible biodiversity that surrounds us and inspires us. And the biodiversity that should motivate us to really go beyond what we know. And let me just give you a snapshot of the blue economy versus the green. I have been very active in that green economy for 30 years, but it's expensive, it requires subsidies, and it imposes taxes. We don't have governments who can afford it anymore. That blue economy must be innovative, competitive, and generate jobs with return on investment. If you don't generate the jobs, your technology must be sacrificed. It cannot be substitutive effects. And when I say it's innovative, it's the innovative business model, not just the innovative technology. And the green economy was too much about protecting what we have, complying with the new laws, and we have to recognize so much in the green economy is divisive. You're for or against. And we have to go beyond that. We have to see the capacity to regenerate the entrepreneurial, and that basically means take risks. Take risks because you believe that you can do better. And choose the best because you believe in it, not because science tells you. I have this very special relationship with the Rhino Time because when I built this factory, the first technological factory that brought me as a hero to Rio in 1992, that technological factory was need of fatty acids from palm oil and led to a massive destruction. I thought that having a biodegradable product made in a green factory made me competitive and it made me competitive because I was able to take 3% of the market without advertising. But it was not sustainable. And I didn't see that because I didn't connect my products and my success in the market and my green factory with the reality of the Rhino Town. And what is happening is that I had <coughs> unintended consequences. I did not know that I was doing it. But the moment that you know, then it converts in collateral damage when you continue. Collateral damage is what military society and culture sees as a prerogative. We, as civil society, we cannot condone it. And that is why we need to change this business model and we need to rethink that the sustainability in the end has to be our capacity to respond to the basic needs of all with what we have. 